Right, a few of you have asked me to show what the inside of the radio looks like. It's been through a few incarnations, but I think this is going to be the final um, mock-up of what it's going to look like before I finish the, the radio. A um, couple of noticeable things is, is obviously these holes here. Um, previously, this is where the um, potentiometer for the volume sat. And here was actually just a shaft um, with string that ran across here and to the back um, over here where the actual potentiometer sat. Um, this was obviously for f frequency tuning and your ind frequency indicator would move along here uh, to show which frequency, uh, frequency you were selecting. Um, I obviously got rid of that because uh, I wasn't going to show a frequency indicator um, and therefore I had to get rid of this shaft string solution and move the potentiometer to here. The volume potentiometer is set here, which was fine, but um, reading up, a lot of people suggest that put a fresh one in, just in case there's any sort of um, issues with it, so just generally being old, um, a lot of people recommend that putting in a, a, a clean new one. The problem I faced um, at the time of buying the uh, then both potentiometers was, I couldn't find potentiometers with shafts long enough or deep enough to come out the case um, for me to be able to fit the knob um, on the outside while they were mounted in, in, in the back of the frame. So, and I looked, I want to say everywhere, but probably someone will find uh, a site that has it now afterwards. But at the time I was looking at RS, I was looking at uh, Farnell, I was looking at just general electronic sites and they all had pretty much stock standard sizes of, I think it was 25 millimeters uh, or even shorter. Um, so the only solution I could come up with to save space, because obviously you can see that you lose about five millimeters uh, in the frame alone before you even get to the thickness of the wood cut out. So the only solution I could come with, up with at the time was to actually put a piece of aluminium at the back of the uh, wooden case and mount the potentiometers uh, and the, uh, sorry, yeah, the potentiometers and now rotary encoder on this side to the actual wooden case, cut holes out where they would go so that the, they would be no, um, that the, 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 the frame would still fit flush, that the buttons would all come out of the case. Uh, nicely. So that was kind of a bit of a hacky solution um, but again I couldn't find ones with shafts long enough for me to fit them in the frame um, and come out the case and fit the knobs uh, comfortably. So that was kind of a bit of a hack of a solution. So that it looks messy um, but obviously when it all is fitted you don't really notice it. No one would actually ever notice that it's not actually Part of the frame. The old switches are obviously um, they are from the original radio um, and the frame. I had to obviously cut out a um, bit extra uh, to fit the LCD screen uh, as you can probably see there I had to cut out a bit extra. Um, again I initially had it f uh, f uh, fitted at the back of the frame here yeah? but there was a noticeable at least a five millimeter gap that you could actually see through the, uh, even with the tinted um, uh, perspex mounted, you could still see the gap. And when you viewed the, the radio from a, uh, from a, especially from a high angle, the LCD would actually be quite hidden. You wouldn't see the top line of the LCD at all, purely because it was so far back. So actually, this was one of the things I did this weekend was to cut this out so I could get the LCD flush with this uh, perspex. Um, just to give me give me better visibility. Um, like I mentioned, the switches are all stock standard. I run a, a bus connection, uh, positive power from the Pi uh, through here, and then I have the individual switches wired um, goes through the case, uh, through the back here, and into my um, uh, circuit board that I made with all the resistors, and I've got a GPIO pin. Here that with I would take with a ribbon cable back towards the Pi. I just made some extra breakout boards here. Um, obviously, because when I went for the solution with the um, then potentiometers, 
uh, in the actual case to make it easier to get the frame out um, and leave the potentiometers behind I put just this in place it just made it easier just to unscrew the wires um, and leave this actually soldered onto the board um, just to make it a little bit easier to get it in and out um, uh, yeah nothing special otherwise back there these switches had a horrible residue or something on it I don't actually know what it was but the solder was a pain to take I actually had to sand down uh, a lot of these pins to actually get the solder to stick um, these were the uh, original frequency preset tuners um, so they're still there um, purely just so I don't have holes in the back of the case um, but they're not actually being functionally used for anything um, what else um, this side I mounted the amp this is an Adafruit amp uh, the model number there I think is 98306 um, it's a tiny little amplifier it's powered straight from the GPIO pins um, but it works great for the little speaker that's in this unit um, it's it's sufficient way sufficient I tested with the next model up from this one um, and it was overkill it was really really overkill at the bottom here I've just got a simple um, relay uh, switch that I have to power the amp that's just to reduce that crackling noises that happens when the Raspberry Pi boots up um, before the USB sound card kicks in um, so what I simply do with that is um, when the radio is still booting this is off and when my main program kicks in for the radio um, it turns the relay on powers the amp and then we get proper uh, audio through the speak front speaker um, so yeah that's it I mean it, it, it again it's messy it's um, but it does the job um, arguably when you it's all mounted in the case you won't actually see anything uh, the little things I've done this weekend was to actually physically mount the pie um, and there you can just see the uh, rotary encoder uh, sorry rotary encoder this side and the potentiometer that side um, and then these wires hook up to that breakout board I made in the back so that's the radio um, obviously still got a bit of cleaning up to do and uh, I want to the um, actual faceplate of the radio I want to actually sand down I mean this was the condition um, when I got the unit and um, this is obviously completely worn out um, and it's it has quite a few nicks and scratches all the way so what I'll probably do is I'll sand this all down and give it uh, my own custom paint just so just to make it that little bit more unique because obviously it's not a Roberts radio anymore um, and it's my own version of the radio I do have a, a, um, a restored version of this uh, exact radio, exact model, so it'll be nice to have my one and the original one together. Um, this one was not functional when I bought it, so um, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people will complain that I destroyed an antique, but anyway, it was uh, someone's trash and uh, became my little pet project. So that, that's the inside of the radio, um, I'll obviously post more when I've done all the work and uh, yeah I uh, hope you guys enjoyed